Warning, this show contains adult language, so viewer and listener discretion is advised. Welcome to another edition of Up and In It. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff, and if you're new here, welcome as well. And if you're wondering what the show's about, it's entirely dedicated to improving quality of life for both people and planet through liberation and independence, moving you from surviving to thriving and living life on your own terms. Today is episode 238, and it's Innovate Everything. I'm a little bit excited about this one here. I'm in a chipper good mood, and you know... Talk about innovations. I hope that the innovations I'm making by doing my podcast while I'm driving on my work commutes doesn't bother you guys. If you guys notice today, there's no background hum and noise and the big old truck just bouncing around. I hope it is. Uh, I hope this uh, this information finds you guys well. But that's one of just one of the things that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, kind of this opening of the way to innovate everything. I cannot stop innovating things, and I think that this is a great value for people to start thinking this way. Uh, my child, let's start off with, uh, my kid wanted to get a, a cat and they wanted a, a, a kitty cat, right? And what I had was trying to figure out if I'm the one that's going to be cleaning the poop, if I'm the one that's going to be feeding this thing and taking care of it. And sure enough, uh, I did some innovation, so I didn't have to do all that. Uh, let me explain. So first of all, I live tiny. For a lot of you guys who don't know, I've been completely, in, talk about innovations, I've innovated my entire life, my money, uh, my health, my spirituality, my happiness, all I, I get to do, I have control almost entirely of my, of my life to do whatever the fuck I want. So I live in a tiny house, aka travel trailer, and in this area there's lots of cats, there's a lot of people who own cats. So one of the innovations I came up with is what if I started buying and mind you, this is very, uh, uh, <laughs> I'd say, conniving to the cat population of where I live. I went and got myself this thing's called Temptations. And there's these little kitty treats. And uh, obviously, they're, the cats are completely tempted to eat these things. They'd come by, you know, and they'd be a little skittish. And what I do is I just, I knew that they see me and that, that uh, um, I see them. And I would just toss one at them. Some of them would run away. Some of them would just hang back and kind of look. Is this guy going to squirt me, throw a rock at me or what? come back out and eat that Temptations uh, kitty treat and was like, oh, because there's one thing I know, all living things on this planet identify with the uh, uh, concept of yum yums. <laughs> so needless to say, I started getting these cats coming around. Uh, and speaking of innovations with that, I, they've completely, I think, taken care of my rat and mice problem. So we did two things. So I got these cats to show up and sure enough, my daughters would come up, my oldest daughter, uh, would come out and start petting the cats and stuff like that. And they just, you know, they had to work their way up to trust us. So I started leaving uh, food. I did canned foods after a while, you know, uh, leaving a, uh, some little snacks for them and stuff like that, making some little beds. I just made a cardboard box. And my dog passed away, unfortunately, uh, back in uh, 20, 2020 in January. God damn, I'm still not over that, that dog. But anyways, uh, I grabbed her blankie. And, uh, oh, I miss my dog. And I uh, put it inside of a cardboard box, you know, make a little bed for the, the cats. And sure enough, some of them start to take naps over here and they're hanging out. So when my kids do come outside, there's some animals there. There's some kitty cats. And the kitty cats started loving on us. They're a little feral. They don't like to be held and stuff like that yet. But uh, kept giving them food and then started teaching my daughters to give them snacks and stuff like that. So needless to say, we get visited by... Oh, we used to have like three to four cats visiting us all the time instead of and, and, until the males actually started beating the hell out of each other like us smart fucking males like to do. And now we're down to one who's dominated the area, this little black cat called, named Toby. And I innovated. <clears throat> what did I learn from this? is that my kids aren't going to feed and clean up after the cat. So it's my routine in the morning, which isn't that bad. Uh, all I do is grab a handful of cat food, put it inside of a dish, which I've also innovated. I welded a, uh, a doggy dish onto a stainless steel plate where there's an island of water in, uh, around the perimeter so that the ants don't come and, and get into the food. We had that problem for a while. When I first started out, I was just leaving little, little uh, Tupperware caps or my stainless steel, my, my drinking jar or lids. Uh, with water and food for them in various different places. So I innovated, guys, and I don't have to worry about a vet bill. I don't have to worry about them uh, cleaning up their poop and stuff like that. And they show up whenever they want. They come here all, all night, all during the day, and then they just go home. And these are the kind of things I look at. I've got tons of them. One of my innovations I just uh, gave to a, a fellow who's starting a lawnmower route business, <coughs> and uh, I gave him some advice of, on what I would do. And exactly what I would do is innovate, as I said, with my money. 
is I told them I already tested this thing out where I went door to door in my neighborhood and I spoke about this. I know those of you who follow, you know, been following, but uh, those of you who haven't, what I did is I went door to door in my neighborhood and I says, hi, my name's Adrian and I live actually right down the block right over there and I'm looking to mow lawns. I already own a business, I work, and I'm just maybe thinking about starting a side hustle, but I know if you're interested, because I can actually help beat the price that you guys, uh, you know, what you're mowing your lawn for. The way to go, too, is how much are you paying for your, your lawn service, you know, so they don't lowball you, but know your, your, your price and everything. Be savvy about that, how much you're worth and how much you need to make. But basically, some of these people told me, like, $80 a month, and I said, well, what does that uh, uh, entail? And they're like, well, they spray for uh, spiders, and they... You know, take down the trees every once in a while and stuff like that. It's $80. I said, well, what if I was able to take it down to 70 And they're like, when can you start? Right? That's uh, 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 what $120 a, a year that they're able to pocket and save. Um, so I went door to door. And the whole gimmick of this whole thing, the innovations, was to get all of my neighbors where basically I would push a lawnmower, and this was in a cookie cutter uh, uh, place where we used to live, where I literally can walk from one lawn, pushing a lawnmower onto the next, the next, the next, as far as I want to go, and just start circling these things and just getting them all done all at once. I wouldn't even need a vehicle. I wouldn't need anything. Uh, guys that I see when I'm uh, in my construction sites, I see them show up, they mow one house, they drive away, and they just go blocks away, if not maybe even a whole entire city away. So by getting all of these things, the overhead's super low. You're cutting down on time. Yes, you're you're getting paid less than these guys, but you got to think about that 15-minute or 20-minute drive that you got to go to the other side of town to mow that other lawn. While that guy's driving there, you just got three more done. You're actually tripling the amount of money that you can make by dominating an area. You're making more money. Uh, you have way less overhead. As I said, you don't even need a car, really. You could just get yourself a little cart if you needed to with a, what, a blower a weed eater, and a, uh, a, a lawnmower. And all of these, these these two things could sit on top of your lawnmower. You wouldn't even need a cart. You can lawnmower or mow everything up. As soon as the, uh, um, you probably need a broom and a dustpan. That can also be carried. Uh, dump the uh, lawn clippings in, the, in the, uh, the, the client's trash bin and you're off. So those are the kind of innovations that I look at. One thing that I'm doing right now is with the supply chain disruptions here. This is, uh, what, June, first week of June. Maybe we're going into the second of 2021. And one of the things I look at is supply chain disruptions happening in my business where we are looking to, uh, uh, what we're finding is that a lot of materials are being uh, uh, shorted and we can't get our hands on them. Price of inflation, a lot of things are going up. A lot of clients don't like to be charged the extra money that we're needing to uh, uh, charge them. Uh, you know, when the materials go up, obviously, and gas goes up, we got to raise our prices. So what would one do? Uh, well, I'll tell you what one would do. One would start selling water. <laughs> and we're selling the, the client's water to them, meaning that uh, sitting on roofs, uh, I'm a roofing contractor, licensed to do that and many other things. And what I looked at was, wow, it's called deionized water. So I basically have to pay for these filtrations, which is really not that much at all. It's like $40 a month is the overhead, right? And then the gas maybe of driving to places. But again, I would take the lawnmower route uh, uh, philosophy here and I dominate an area cleaning solar panels. So basically you hook up their water hose, you fill up this tank full of deionized water and the deionized water doesn't leave spots on whatever you're washing, a car, a skylight, a, uh, which is very important for, for solar panels. So Really, if I started the solar panel business, I don't really have much of an overhead or anything I really need. And in fact, the product, I just bring my filtration system. The product's already there at my uh, client's house. So these are the type of innovations I look at. And to go further on that one, uh, I have a lot of competition that I could beat out if I do every single job uh, in that neighborhood. Uh, so I already got my foot in the door with that. The other thing I got is a lot of these people would not even be able to afford, even if they did, they wouldn't want to pay the exorbitant prices that I pay for liability and workers' compensation insurances. So when I go to these people's homes to clean their, their solar panels, they actually have a licensed professional roofer who is fully licensed for, for liability insurance, but, you know, $3 million insurance policy, uh, workers' comp in case somebody gets hurt, but also the expertise if we break something or if we see something throughout the years, uh, these are repeat clients that you have uh, us there to take care of these things for you. If we break a roofing tile or if we... Now in the future, you get a leak or something causes a leak when we're, we're uh, uh, doing the solar panel. We can cover you. 
but it's going to be at an extra price, a higher price than what the other guys are because it costs a lot of money. How do I know if this is even working? Because I already tried it. I did some dry runs. I went to clients and told them, yes, uh, normally this would cost, say, $150 for yours, but mine's $250, but that comes with all the licensing and everything like that. And if we break something, we can fix it. Those are the type of innovations I think that can help people in these hard times, and that's why I'm here with this message today. Uh, my daughter, I wanted to get her exercise. I'm just going to give you guys a whole bunch of ideas and things and things that I'm actually using now in my life. Uh, my daughter is uh, the young one. I have a special needs daughter for those of you who don't know. And I got to get her exercising and she just doesn't want to have any of it. So what did I do? I went and took a toy that she likes and I grabbed the toy and I took off running with it. Right? Uh, I took her to a park uh, down where I live in my tiny house RV trailer in the RV park. Uh, there's actually a lake and a big old giant park over here. So I'll drive down there and I'll park. I'll get some cold waters and everything. And then I'll grab her uh, froggy Muppet that she likes. And I'll just take off running. I'm like, I got your pu your froggy Muppet, you know. And she's like, give that back to me. I'm like, come and get it. See what happens. I just bolt. And she's running around. And then I'll let her have it. And then I'll say, give me, that's mine now. And she'll giggle and start. We, so we're playing. And she's running back and forth. Very interesting, too, is this kid's supposed to have asthma. Due to the use of high doses of vitamin C and actually raw dairy uh, milk, uh, daughter's running around for 20 minutes, no problem, getting sweaty and everything. It's a diversion as well. I've said a lot on, on my shows and stuff like that in the past where when I do my cardio, there's times that I do uh, on Instagram, I actually do some extra footage for you guys on the Up In It show here. And um, I'm walking for 30 minutes, in fact, and I'm walking fast. And the 30 minutes just flies right by when you divert your attention uh, from, from uh, you know, pain or, or, you know, breathing and things like that. So that's what I noticed. My daughter's having a great time running around and she's getting exercise. We're both getting exercise and we're playing together. We're stacking functions, as we like to say on the show. And it's just, like I said, I can't think of as uh, much as uh, the, uh, how important innovating your life is and how much out there is to innovate. Uh, very proud of my oldest daughter. Uh, about a month ago, I took her to sushi. For those of you who follow, you guys know that's my thing. Uh, I took them to a thrift store. It was my youngest daughter's birthday, so I was buying her some uh, you know, purses and some, some high heel shoes she loves. And my oldest daughter found a pair of boots that she wanted. And they were like $14, $15. She says, I really want to buy these boots. And I says, well, you know, we're, we're saving up to buy a house. And, uh, you know, you already got like four or five pairs of boots. We're not going to, you know, we live tiny. There's no place to put them. She goes, I really want these boots. I says, sorry, sweetheart. Uh, maybe you could do some chores or earn some money, you know, innovate your life to be able to afford these things. So she innovated in saying, I'll sacrifice my roll of sushi to get these boots. How about that? I really want these boots and I don't care. I'll, I'll not have a roll of sushi. I said, you're going to get your roll of sushi and the boots because of the, the innovations that you just did. That's the kind of teaching for in you know, our last couple shows. We were down talking public education and, you know, things like that. But that's how you instill innovations and, uh, and systems thinking and thinking for yourself into children. So I was very, very impressed with that. Uh, I just had a job where somebody called me to do a roof inspection on a house that they want to buy. They don't own. I says, I'm not going out there to give you a free estimate because that's pretty much what happens in, in my industry. We go do free estimates uh, unless somebody doesn't own the house. We come to find out. So I told the person, well, I'll tell you what, for uh, X amount of dollars, I will come out and I will give you a full written report. You can present this to the uh, lenders or whoever, whatever you're doing here for leverage. There'll be a video, there'll be photographs and all this, and this is the amount of money. And they says, well, I don't really want to spend that type of money. Uh, can I apply it towards, this is what was crazy. Can I apply that towards uh, uh, repairs on something else? So I'm like, sure, I'll just drive over today and then we'll just give you that money back if you got another job for me. No, we're going to charge you. I said, well, how about this? And asked the person, what do you do for a living? They says, oh, I'm a financial advisor. And I says, interesting. Well, how about we trade equal for value exchange? I'll come uh, estimate your, your, your roof, this prospective house that you want to buy, in exchange for a couple hours of some financial uh, advice uh, you can give me on my special needs daughter. They said, perfect. Innovation, people. We're bartering now. Uh, I believe I'd get way more better uh, uh, value than she did. This one's kind of funny. This is my Violet's, uh, my my da daughter's menstrual cycles, women's menstrual cycles. I'm a single dad, for those of you following, and I do everything completely different from what you're probably used to. That's why I'm here doing the show. And one of the things I notice is that women are very, uh, um, society treats them very different for their menstrual cycles, the moon cycles, if you will. 
And one of the things I taught my daughters is to not feel bad about yourself, especially something that's natural and it's going to happen anyways. And one of the innovations I looked at was, first of all, that's what I taught them. Don't fucking hide like from me. Don't hide from anywhere else. Every fucking woman gets them. Maybe a handful don't, you know, menopause and all that. But everybody goes through this. It's fucking normal. You should not feel ashamed or embarrassed ever, hands down. Uh, I even look to do this, uh, to take this a step further. What I look to do is with my family, of course, and with the consent of my kids, was let's have a uh, menstrual cycle party, right? We all need reasons to drink fucking beer, right? And barbecue and everything, get shit-faced and call each other names and dance until the wee hours in the morning. And I'm just kidding, but kind of not. Uh, my family's crazy. Uh, but no, I seriously looked at this to where... Um, I would have a campfire and I think that I would uh, have all of the elders, the people that I know if in, a, in my perfect world. And I'd have all the women sit there while us men, you know, drink a bunch of fucking beer, you know, did target practicing in the background. No, just kidding. But no, I thought this was really beautiful that the women could sit uh, after for this child and tell them about things like maybe how they used to do things in the old days like how they used to maybe use mosses maybe that's too much information for some people but i don't really give a fuck because it's my show i get to say whatever the fuck i want and i think it's actually beautiful to have the women sit down and give them advice and tell them stories and let that child know that this is a very weird thing that's happening to my body, but it happens to everybody and we're all aware and we're all here to support you. And maybe that the men would come in too and be able to, we can sing a song or something. I don't fucking know. But just the, the, the party was there to notify friends and fi family, like the tribe, the community, that this, this young woman, this young girl is now a woman and has moved into this and that maybe things I look at if she's feeling a little different or something that we should all respect that. And that's why maybe she's feeling this way. But we're all aware and it's nothing to hide about. And we bring it all in the open. Completely fucking backwards from our dumbass fucking systems that we have on just one of those things where people are supposed to feel scared and fucking hide and pretend like nothing's fucking happening when it's happening around us and happening to everybody. Nobody fucking talks about it. I say talk about it. I say take it a step for forward and sell it. Jesus fucking Christ, I'm spitting all over the microphone over here. Anyways, um, moving forward. I just thought that was cool. Uh, grow my own food. I utilize other people's properties. <laughs> Innovations, people. Spin farming. And there's so many things. I get surplus of extra things. Uh, plant. I grow so much food, I can't fucking eat it all. Start a worm compost bin. Barter. Give it to people. Sell save stuff for seed, grow stuff for seed, give it away, which is what I'm looking to do for the hungry. Instead of feeding people, you know, giving them a fish, teach them how to fish so they feed themselves for life. Uh, it's making me look good. I'm hoping that it'll boost my business up and we can go even bigger and feed even more homeless people. Give them seeds. Uh, start a business selling worms to people who want to fish. Start a business selling red wiggler worms for people who want to do worm castings themselves. All the excess food that we have, we put inside. The farm keeps generating and I get free compost. There's just so much to innovate here. Um, and then turn that all around and teach others. Teach others how, look at what I just fucking said. I can teach people how to, how to save seed. I could teach people how to sell seed. I could teach people how to uh, grow for seed. I could teach people how to grow their own food. I could teach them how to do worm castings. I could teach them how to mix soils. I could teach them all kinds of different things. It's I've diversified myself. I've innovated into something else where I could start a hole, and that's exactly what I'm doing, by the way, uh, trying to. And that's the future. That's what I look at for my fucking retirement. A lot of people are worried about retirement. I'm in my mid-40s. I guarantee you by the time I'm 65 and I keep up doing what I'm doing, I will be a fucking Zen master. Have, I'll be sitting there butt naked in my farm with, fly, with butterflies flying around my forehead. Just kidding. I wouldn't be butt naked. I'd have like a diaper on or something, you know, like India style, you know, chanting. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting weird now. Uh, sun's coming out and it's actually heating the inside of my truck here where I'm recording this shit. And uh, I'm starting to get this kind of scene now. But you guys get what I'm saying, I hope. How does this improve the world overall is the kind of thing I've been trying to do on the end of these shows. Jesus Christ, has this helped the fucking world. Guys, we are in some hard times, but it's up to you to innovate your life, to take some of these examples and things that, uh, that I've shared with you here today, whether it's business, health, spirituality, 
so there's so many things that we could fucking do. Uh, last episode uh, was, uh, or I think it's the coming episode tomorrow. I accidentally pre-recorded that one. It was about the education system and things like that. And it's innovations like this that we're not inspired to do, I think. And, and that once you start seeing the openings and everything and you start seeing the innovations and the answers and the, and the capabilities, it's like a muscle. I'll leave you guys with that. Innovation is like a muscle. A lot of us are compartmentalized and scared and, and we're fucking embarrassed by a lot of shit that we have in our life, right? So we're scared what other people fucking think about us. If I, if I do something different, if I look different, if I talk different, people, I won't, I'll lose my friends or people think differently about me. I'll lose my job or this. Or when you start innovating, that's when life gets better. That's how things change. If you don't like what's fucking happening, you're not truly happy. Start innovating. Start changing shit around so that you can get into what you want. And if people don't respect you, guess what? Don't respect them. They're not your fucking friends. Because a true friend would say, I think you're fucking nuts, dude. You know? But go ahead. I support you. You know, you're, you're going off. You're doing something completely strange and weird or whatever. Get the guts. Get the fucking balls. The, the human up, as I say on this show. Human up to yourself fucking first. Get out there and start being free, basically, is a, a, the only the way I can say it. Be free and start moving in your life. And be happy. Happiness is a choice. We talked about that. Change comes from you. In the end, nobody can change your fucking life but you. You're just fucking scared. You're just not... Uh, you're, you've been blinded. You've been confused. And all you need to do is get back to your intuitive self and your innovation. Start working them out. And, at, and I promise you guys, as you keep utilizing these things, life becomes better and easier, healthier, tastier, everything. Guys, if I've given you any value for this show, please like, subscribe, comment, re give me review. Help me get this show off the ground for fuck's sakes. I love doing these things. I want to be here for you guys. I'd love to turn this into full fucking time, but I need your guys' support. So please do so only if I've given you guys some value. Uh, it's description and the, and the links below there's up and in it.com where you can find the, the the show in case i ever get deplatformed meaning they may take me away from the shit i said like the menstrual shit today bam facebook youtube whatever they may just annihilate me but you I, i'll always be at up and in it.com um you guys could also find on up and in it tiktok instagram youtube facebook and anywhere where you could find these podcasts and as i always say guys go out there and have yourself a near life experience don't lose your muchness carry on the fire human the fuck up live it love it and own it and bone it my friends <laughs>